Kenya, a land of majestic beauty, where Mother Nature is at her most spectacular. Drive a few miles in any direction, and you'll find vistas you could only dream about in other parts of the world. Breathtaking wildlife, living as if time were standing still. But for all these riches, Kenya is also a poor nation. For many people here, simple subsistence is still the name of the game. In much of the country, life is about as slow as it gets. But there is also a new Kenya, moving at a whirlwind pace. In a small village about six hours' drive from Nairobi is a place where athletes from this impoverished country are being groomed into superstars the best long-distance runners in the world. Welcome to Itan, a farming village 8,000 feet up in the mountains of the Great Rift Valley. Many residents have no running water, there are no stoplights, and the one stadium in town has a track that is so run down Pretty much any high school track coach in America would deem it unfit for competition. But that doesn't stop the thousand full-time runners who live here. On any morning of any day, you will find hundreds of people, world champions alongside those training in the only running clothes they own, out for a run on the town's red dirt roads. By 6 a.m., Runners are already out pounding the dirt. For many, it's the first of two or even three running sessions of the day in which they grind out as many as 24 miles. These athletes could probably win nearly any road race in America, but here in E10, they are just faces in the crowd. Some of these runners know when their next race is. Others are just hoping to get noticed one day by a sports manager who might sign them up for an overseas competition. But one thing is for sure, none of these people are jogging simply to stay in shape or to lose a few pounds. Here, running is a job with the chance of a serious paycheck and everyone in E10 is running to win. It's the mantra Wilson Kipp sang resident of E10 and lightning fast long distance runner repeats to himself before every race. I can win. That's really what comes into my, my mind, that I can beat these guys. No matter how painful the situation is, no matter how, how hard it is, I can make it. I can beat the guys. And beat the guys he did, winning the London Marathon this April and outracing what some said was the toughest field ever. You know when you are fast, there's something you have done. You don't just wake up and you find yourself fast. So if I don't train very well, you find that maybe that day, you'll find yourself, you are beaten. Reason, the hard athlete did more than you. Kipsang started running late in life. He didn't discover his talent until after he had finished high school and joined the police force. Once he realized he could be one of Kenya's top runners, he moved to Iten in order to pursue training full-time. Living in the town of Iten is a who's who of running's biggest stars, a place where people are often introduced not by their names, but by their marathon times. And in the case of Wilson Kipsang, that would be an astonishing two hours, three minutes, 42 seconds. People around the world still watch YouTube clips of the 2011 Frankfurt Marathon, where the then unknown Kipsang came within four seconds of breaking the world record. That's a pace of four minutes, 43 seconds per mile for 26 miles. Wilson Kipsang scheidet knapp am Weltrekord, aber welch ein Lauf. 
Now think back to the time you raced a mile run in grade school. You probably finished it in somewhere between six and eight minutes, running as hard as you could. Now imagine running twice as fast and keeping it up for over two hours. But Kipsang says the real test is not what your legs can do, but your mind. Sometimes we race until it reaches a point whereby you find that uh, it's painful or you feel like dropping. But uh, what really comes into my mind is that uh, each and every athlete is tired. But the one who is going to hold for some time is the one who is going to, to win the race. It's like you are communicating your, to your body. You can do this. You can do this. Let's go. You can do this. Take me more. One National Olympic Committee of Kenya. Kipsang is one of six Kenyans, three men and three women, who will be representing Kenya at the Olympics in the marathon. On the women's side, Edna Kiplagat is also hoping for gold. It's going to be an history because uh, it's not like any other city marathon we have. So I'm hoping that it's going to be an history for me and it's going to be a big achievement too. This mother of two is the reigning marathon world champion and has won several big international races. But even with all these accomplishments, being named to Kenya's highly competitive marathon team may be the biggest honor of all. I was very happy because uh, it was my dream that uh, maybe one day I can have a chance to represent my country. And so the first uh, time when they, co they called my name that I'm in the team, I was so excited. I couldn't believe that I'm one of the athletes uh, representing Kenya in Olympics. Kenya's marathon talent is so deep that the current world record holder, Patrick McCowell, and this year's Boston Marathon champion, Sharon Cherop, didn't even make the Olympic team. And if that doesn't impress you, think about this. Since 2011, 361 Kenyan men ran an Olympic qualifying time of faster than two hours, 15 minutes. Only 28 American men achieved that time. And when you consider that the United States has more than seven times as many people as Kenya, that statistic is even more awe-inspiring. And as for the town of Etan itself, it is home to all six Kenyan Olympic marathoners. And it has its own unlikely success story. <laughs> 